trade balances and flows of financial capital. As economists see it, trade surpluses can be either good or bad, depending on circumstances, and trade deficits can be good or bad. 2. The challenge is to understand how the international flows of goods and services are connected with international flows of financial capital. In this module we will illustrate the intimate connection between trade balances and flows of financial capital in two ways. A parable of trade between Robinson Crusoe and Friday. And a circular flow diagram representing flows of trade and payments. A two-person economy, Robinson Crusoe and Friday. To understand how economists view trade deficits and surpluses. Consider a parable based on the story of Robinson Crusoe. Crusoe. As you may remember from the classic novel by Daniel Defoe first published in 1719. Was shipwrecked on a desert island. After living alone for some time. He is joined by a second person. Whom he names Friday. Think about the balance of trade in a two-person economy like that of Robinson and Friday. Robinson and Friday trade goods and services. Perhaps Robinson catches fish and trades them to Friday for coconuts. Or Friday weaves a hat out of tree fronds and trades it to Robinson for help in carrying water. For a period of time, each individual trade is self-contained and complete. Because each trade is voluntary, both Robinson and Friday must feel that they are receiving fair value for what they are giving. As a result, each person's exports are always equal to his imports. And trade is always in balance between the two. Neither person experiences either a trade deficit or a trade surplus. However, one day Robinson approaches Friday with a proposition. Robinson wants to dig ditches for an irrigation system for his garden. But he knows that if he starts this project, he will not have much time left to fish and gather coconuts to feed himself each day. He proposes that Friday supply him with a certain number of fish and coconuts for several months. And then after that time, he promises to repay Friday out of the extra produce that he will be able to grow in his irrigated garden. If Friday accepts this offer, then a trade imbalance comes into being. For several months, Friday will have a trade surplus. That is, he is exporting to Robinson more than he is importing. More precisely, he is giving Robinson fish and coconuts. And at least for the moment, he is receiving nothing in return. Conversely, Robinson will have a trade deficit. Because he is importing more from Friday than he is exporting. This parable raises several useful issues in thinking about what a trade deficit and a trade surplus really mean in economic terms. The first issue raised by this story of Robinson and Friday is this. Is it better to have a trade surplus or a trade deficit? The answer, as in any voluntary market interaction, is that if both parties agree to the transaction, then they may both be better off. Over time, if Robinson's irrigated garden is a success, it is certainly possible that both Robinson and Friday can benefit from this agreement. A second issue raised by the parable. What can go wrong? Robinson's proposal to Friday introduces an element of uncertainty. Friday is, in effect, making a loan of fish and coconuts to Robinson. And Friday's happiness with this arrangement will depend on whether that loan is repaid as planned. In full and on time. Perhaps Robinson spends several months loafing and never builds the irrigation system. Or perhaps Robinson has been too optimistic about how much he will be able to grow with the new irrigation system, which turns out not to be very productive. Perhaps, after building the irrigation system, Robinson decides that he does not want to repay Friday as much as previously agreed. Any of these developments will prompt a new round of negotiations between Friday and Robinson. Friday's attitude toward these renegotiations is likely to be shaped by why the repayment failed. If Robinson worked very hard and the irrigation system just did not increase production as intended, Friday may have some sympathy. 
If Robinson loafed or if he just refuses to pay, Friday may become irritated. A third issue raised by the parable of Robinson and Friday is that an intimate relationship exists between a trade deficit and international borrowing, and between a trade surplus and international lending. The size of Friday's trade surplus is exactly how much he is lending to Robinson. The size of Robinson's trade deficit is exactly how much he is borrowing from Friday. Indeed, to economists, a trade surplus literally means the same thing as an outflow of financial capital. And a trade deficit literally means the same thing as an inflow of financial capital. This last insight is worth exploring in greater detail, which we will do in the following section. The story of Robinson and Friday also provides a good opportunity to consider the law of comparative advantage, which you learn more about in the chapter. The following Work It Out feature steps you through calculating comparative advantage for the wheat and cloth traded between the United States and Great Britain in the 1800s. The balance of trade as the balance of payments. The connection between trade balances and international flows of financial capital is so close that the balance of trade is sometimes described as the balance of payments. Each category of the current account balance involves a corresponding flow of payments between a given country and the rest of the world economy. Figure 1 shows the flow of goods and services and payments between one country the United States in this example and the rest of the world. The top line shows U.S. exports of goods and services, while the second line shows financial payments from purchasers in other countries back to the U.S. economy. The third line then shows U.S. imports of goods, services, and investment. And the fourth line shows payments from the home economy to the rest of the world. Flow of goods and services. Lines 1 and 3. Show up in the current account. While flow of funds. Lines 2 and 4. Are found in the financial account. The bottom four lines of the figure 1 show the flow of investment income. In the first of the bottom lines. We see investments made abroad with funds flowing from the home country to rest of the world. Investment income stemming from an investment abroad then runs in the other direction from the rest of the world to the home country. Similarly, we see on the bottom third line an investment from rest of the world into the home country and investment income. Bottom fourth line flowing from the home country to the rest of the world. The investment income, bottom lines 2 and 4, are found in the current account, while investment to the rest of the world or into the home country. Lines 1 and 3, are found in the financial account. Unilateral transfers, the fourth item in the current account, are not shown in this figure. A current account deficit means that the country is a net borrower from abroad. Conversely, a positive current account balance means a country is a net lender to the rest of the world. Just like the parable of Robinson and Friday, the lesson is that a trade surplus means an overall outflow of financial investment capital. As domestic investors put their funds abroad, while the deficit in the current account balance is exactly equal to the overall or net inflow of foreign investment capital from abroad, it is important to recognize that an inflow and outflow of foreign capital does not necessarily refer to a debt that governments owe to other governments. Although government debt may be part of the picture. Instead, these international flows of financial capital refer to all of the ways in which private investors in one country may invest in another country by buying real estate companies and financial investments like stocks and bonds. Key concepts and summary. International flows of goods and services are closely connected to the international flows of financial capital. A current account deficit means that, after taking all the flows of payments from goods, services, and income together, the country is a net borrower from the rest of the world.
A current account surplus is the opposite and means the country is a net lender to the rest of the world. Thank you for watching Booktube channel. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons to receive notifications about new contents.